Hi, everybody. This is Ryan Charles from Nitty Gritty Studios, and we're going to take a quick look at some of the new and exciting updates to Final Cut 10.4's color correction tools. Uh, now, I know most of us are probably using DaVinci Resolve for all of our coloring, but if it's a quick project that you just want to shoot, color, export, get up on the web real quick, you might not want to spend the time and energy to round trip. So with Final Cut Pro X or 10.4's exciting new updates, you don't really need to. So let's dive right in. Let's take a look at this first shot right over here. If you don't have your video scopes open, make sure you just go to View, Video Scopes. And if you can't see your panel here, make sure your inspector is activated. So first we're gonna try and just use the auto balance color feature here. that has been around since the very beginning in Final Cut Pro X. As you see that did a fairly decent job. But if we head over to our effects panel here, you'll see that they've added a new option, which is an manual white balance. So you can select any part of the image that is pure white and that will do your balance for you as well. As you see, they are fairly close. So we're gonna leave it with the automatic because I think it actually did a slightly better job. But we're gonna continue to balance and add a little contrast. So if we head over to our color corrections over here, you'll see that they have finally added color wheels. Now, normally you would have a color board here as your default, which everybody seemed to hate. Um, but with 10.4, they have added wheels, curves, and hue and saturation curves. And you can set color wheels to be your default over here in preferences, editing, default correction, color wheels. So if we wanna push this a little further, we've got our brightness, we've got our saturation, and we've got our standard color wheels that you can drag around. So we'll lower our shadows a little bit. We'll bring up our mids, we'll bring up our highlights a little, drop our shadows again. So there you go, a little more contrast there just to begin with, but as you see, it's still a little too red in the shadows especially. So if we head down here, you'll see you can individually manipulate each RGB channel by itself. We can go ahead and bring those blues down a little bit and then bring them up in the highlights. Do that push and pull dance that everybody loves about color. And you'll see that got us even a little bit closer there. And let's take a look at the color curves. You've got the Luma, you've got your RGB, just like in the other programs that you're used to. Um, but one really cool thing is that if you take a color selector picker right over here, and you click on a part of the image, it will actually find the color that you've clicked on. You'll see here that it changed to cyan. Now you can also pre-select these if you know the color that you're gonna be going to pick. Um, but I think that using the color picker is just as good of a way to find it. Let's hop over to this shot right here where we've got parkour sensation Jesse LaFlair being attacked by a zombie on the ground from zombieparkour.com. And let's say we just wanted to select his blue shirt here and change that color value. So we head up over here to the hue saturation curves. Now these names always confuse me, but essentially the way to read it is that the second word is doing something to the first word. So in this hue versus hue, you'll be changing the hue of a hue that you select with the picker. Hue is just another word for color. In this next one, hue versus saturation, you'll be changing the saturation of a specific hue or color that you'll be picking with the color picker. So for instance, if we wanted to change this blue into another color, we would go to the hue versus hue, select our color right there, and simply change away, as you can see. We've changed that from blue to green. But what happened was there were also some blues in areas outside of his shirt that also got picked up. So if we wanna somehow isolate this arm so that you're not picking the colors in his face, what you can do is simply head over here, add a shape, and move that shape and shape it around the area that you wanna isolate. So as you see here, you can stretch this a little further and Boom, now we've gotten his shirt to a large extent without affecting his face. Uh, now, of course, there are more fine mask options that you can do in Final Cut Pro X, but we're just trying to give you a quick cursory understanding of it. Uh, now, also, if you didn't want to use a shape mask, but instead wanted to use a color mask, we'll reset this, you could do the same thing. So if you head over here to add color, the picker comes up, and as you select, you will see the selections around. 
So that's your blue right there. And if you want to see what that looks like, what your selection mask is, you hit here to view masks and boom, there are your blues. So for instance, if we wanted to get rid of his face again over here, we could actually add a shape mask on top of the color mask. Move this around slightly. And as you see now, the bottom half of the image is selected with a color picker underneath and a shape mask modifying that on top. So you can combine these in ways to get different varying effects the same way that you can in DaVinci Resolve. Now we could certainly go into more detail describing what each one of these hue and saturation curves do, but that's really for another tutorial. So let's head over to this last shot and talk about LUTs. Now in Final Cut Pro X, when you have a clip selected, if you go over to the information panel in the inspector, make sure that extended is selected here rather than your basic metadata view. And you should have a camera LUT option right here. If this camera LUT option is not showing up here, go down to your metadata options and do edit metadata view. Here you can search for a whole number of different options. Camera LUT is being one of them. As you can see, it is already selected and click OK, and then it'll definitely be here. So let's say we shot a RE RAW, and I know that that's what this is. I might go over here and select RE Log C, and then boom, I've got the LUT on my camera. I know this was not shot in RE Log, so that's why it looks weird, so we'll take that off. Now, let's say you had a camera LUT that you wanted to apply here, like a Canon Log, but then you wanted to also add an additional LUT on top of that. Well, if you head over to color here in the effects panel, you will see that they have a custom LUT option. So you can go ahead and drag that on your clip. And then in addition to the camera LUT that you have applied, you can head over to your effects and apply a custom LUT. So let's say I have a little green film LUT. I want to really stylize this. We can do that. You can also change the input and output to convert it into uh, various color spaces like Rec 2020. You can mix the LUT into various different degrees. And you can also add custom LUTs by going here, choose custom LUT, navigate to where you know you have some LUTs on your computer, and you can go ahead and import those as well. And there you are. Also, if you are working with some red raw footage, for instance, you can head over here to your information panel, head down here to modify red raw settings. Now you're getting this warning because we've created proxy media from the original Red Raw, always recommended on most systems. So in order to modify the Red Raw settings, it will have to delete the transcoded media, which is fine for me right now because we're just demoing it. But as you can see here, the proxy has gone away now. So the simple fix is you head over to view and go back to optimized original and you'll see we're back in action here. Now this will be sufficient for coloring, but we can't really play this back in real time. As you can see here, you can change the color space to various presets, just like you can in a lot of other programs. You can change your ISO dramatically over here. You can set it really low, you can set it really high. You can change the color temperature. The last thing I'll mention real quickly about Final Cut Pro X is I like this ability to select a clip here head over to your color presets over here, and you can literally preview these various effects in the clip that's live in the viewer simply by, by hovering over it. So this is a really cool and interesting way to preview some looks without having to actually apply it onto the clip itself. And for my taste, this is just a pretty cool option. So that's it. Those are some of the really cool, interesting new color features in Final Cut Pro X or 10.4. I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial and consider using Final Cut Pro 10 for your complete workflow needs in the future. Take it easy now. Have a good day.